it's about uh, oh, it's about 10:30 here. I'm just uh, working on combining some corn here, and uh, getting closer to being wrapped up. This corn's probably the taller, tallest corn we got. Um, looked really good all summer, even considering the drought and stuff. And then when the hail came, it stripped all the leaves off of it, and and. Uh, it's not as bad as what my field was, but I really thought when I when I've been watching it even this fall here, I really thought it was going to be pretty good, um, you know, because the height was there and and it just looked really healthy even uh, considering what it's been through. Um, like some of our other fields, you know, you've seen them; they were about knee high, but they ended up doing you know better than I thought from their looks. But this one's actually one of the worst fields of my dad's that we're going to combine here um, really surprised me. Um, it's probably 30 bushel an acre less than in those really short fields that uh, I made a video on here before. Um, I think I made a video anyhow, but anyhow, I guess we're just rocking along here and I've only got about uh, a couple more rounds I think left in this field and then all I've got left to do here on this farm is uh, pick up a few uh, places where we chop silage and left some corn along the silage or along our hunting strips for hunters and uh, we're going to take that out and then I've got some more mine to do and then I've got a little bit more custom work to do and then we'll be done. I'm not sure how long that'll be but we're, we'll get her done. I don't know if you guys can see back there very well or not, but you can see it's pouring in pretty decent, but I'm running a pretty good clip too. <clears throat> I'm running, I was running about five and a half or so, but since I'm videoing, I slowed down to about 4.9, so I guess I'll slow down a half a mile an hour roughly, but this combine could take it faster, but you know, there's a limitation on the combine now is how straight can I drive it because you don't want to start flipping the gears side to side and uh, start throwing ears on the ground. These stocks are pretty weak, so you got to be, got to drive pretty straight if you can. Um, yeah, I just feel I'm awful disappointed in this field. I uh, really thought this was going to be a good field. That's why I left it to kind of the last. But, uh, yeah, just not the case, you know, so that, that's just showing, you know, look, looks can be deceiving terribly on crops. I don't care whether it's corn or soybeans are probably actually some of the worst, um, worst to deal with. Um, as far as when you're trying to judge the yield off the looks, it just generally doesn't work the best. Um, another side note, this is actually the field that my wife flew the drone in when I was spraying it so um, if you guys wanted to see this field this earlier in the summer here you can sure do that um, I do think part of my problem on the east side of this field is it was some corn on corn and I think I had some rootworm problems um, not very bad but not very good either um, now I think I think this is a year I guess that I don't think it really hurt us that bad because we didn't have the water. But I think on a good year, I think that we probably would have lost uh, probably 50 bushel an acre, but this year the loss was minimal because we didn't have the bushels to lose. So, I uh, guess it is what it is, but um, is what happened, I, I joined two fields here together. There was four, either four or five fields in this quarter. And I'm slowly making the field bigger and bigger. So this is, I think, a 60-acre field. I'm trying to make three, three field, two or three fields per quarter. Um, normally three. Three works out pretty good for what we're doing here. And uh, anyhow, so I, was, I combined two small fields into one big field, and and I miscalculated how much seed I was dumping in. I had a little brain fart. And, end up having too much seed so I just kept planting it and that's how I ended up with a non triple stack corn on on corn because normally I would plant uh, triple stack corn on corn on corn but it just it just was kind of a brain fart and I just thought well it'd be a little experiment it wasn't very many acres on that side of the field just a few um yeah because it, it was just a small strip over there 
that was left that I added to this field here, so. But, I'm not sure these markets here this year are sure hurting everybody and the, the yields sure aren't there in our area at least. Um, we've had a pretty decent fall for harvest. Um, can't really complain too much. <clears throat> um, right now I've been doing a lot of a lot of work myself as far as the harvest goes. Uh, I'm hauling it to the yard and and I'm doing the truck driving and I'm stopping to unload and it's taking more time but we're getting it done. My uh, dad's been doing some chores and my brother's been doing other things too so we've been just trying to run a pretty sleek ship around here and and sometimes I think it would be nice just to go hard at the combining for a few days and get it done but you know every, we got to get our other stuff done too so uh, the weather looks good for here a little, a little bit longer so I don't think we're hurting ourselves too bad. I guess you know that's how it works. But for those of you guys who've uh, made it this far, um, I appreciate you guys watching these videos here this long. These some sprayer tracks I got on the rows. You can see them right in front of me there and there. Rows down some corn. And I appreciate you guys that care about my thoughts, opinions, and concerns. Um, I'm all about giving uh, constructive criticism to people. And I, I don't mind um, constructive criticism at, at all on my videos. Uh, I tend, I, I, I guess I'm not going to respond to, um, I guess to put it frank, people who be in jerks. I'm just not going to do it. Not going to give them the time of day. But people who are actually trying to have an honest conversation, um, I don't care. You know, I don't care. If your opinion's different than mine, everyone has opinions, and and you know a lot of times no one's really wrong. It's just how a person wants to do things, and and I definitely try to keep my comments I leave on other people's videos uh, positive, uh, trying to show them the way I think. And I understand some people will never think the way I think, but that's okay. Um, that's why we're we're in a free world, and you don't have to think what I think. But got the since I've only got a little bit left here, I left the tractor running with the lights on. So when I park my combine here and I shut my lights off, I can mosey my way back into the tractor without uh, tripping over corn stalks and keep it warm. Um, it's been, like I said, it's been pretty decent, but but you know it's just a little rough right now. The wind's blowing and blowing, and it's just for some reason it's a cool. I don't know, the, the wind's really biting tonight, so I don't know if it's just, uh, not sure what it is, I guess. But I'm having a few electrical problems with my combine here. Um, I've been having some problems with my um, unloader on my combine, and, uh, and now here, the last couple days, I've been having problems with my voltage. And... I'm not sure what's going on with it, to be quite honest. Yeah, I hit my unload button, but it don't turn on. So, oh, it's just, I've tried everything. Last year I had a few problems with my unloader and had the dealer come out and they tried to figure it out and couldn't figure it out because it wouldn't act up when they were here. And then here I went, put up with it last year and all of a sudden it starts working and I had no problems with it for the rest of the year, which was a lot of bushels ran through it. And now all of a sudden here we're setting and the dumb thing won't unload. What a piece of, piece of crap. It's because I got a couple acres left. Sometimes I shut my lights off and that seems to help. Yeah, see there it went. I don't know what the, I don't know what the heck's going on. But uh, needless to say, I guess hopefully we can get it going. I, I'm not sure if I have a bad connection to my cab, but my alternator's charging, so I don't think it's my alternator. I kind of checked the batteries over, um, but like it, I don't know if you guys can see my GPS screen down here, down there, it's like 11, 3, 10, 1, 11, 2, 10, 2, 10, 4, 11, you know, it just, then it jumps up once in a while to 13, and I don't know what the heck's going on with it, but 
gonna have to get that figured out. I don't know if, like I said, hopefully there's just a bad connection somewhere. And I've checked some of them, but I haven't had good luck finding what's wrong. But it's hopefully we can get done. I'm really thinking about sending this combine to the shop. Um, we bought it a couple, like three years ago, and the first year we sent it to the shop after we were done, and then last year we didn't send it to the shop. And I'm thinking now this year we we might, and they can figure out all all the electrical gremlins that we're having wrong with it right now. But anyhow, I guess I uh, I'm gonna go for another round with you guys and gibber and jabber a little bit, and, and, uh, and then I think we're gonna call her quit. I think then my next round I'll be along the fence, and I don't wanna. I don't want to have my, I want to be able to have full concentration when I'm along that fence so I don't hit something, I guess. Uh, along the fence there's a little, it goes up and I don't want to run my schnout there in the ground. I've done that before and you know I'd be banned from, I'd be banned from YouTube forever if, if I ran my schnout in the ground I think and caught it on camera because there'd be some pretty foul language I think. I don't know, hopefully this, I'm hoping this video turns out for you guys, I guess. I'm not sure if it will with it being dark, but I was going to do this, uh, do this, uh, combine in here in the daylight on this field and show you guys it a little bit more, but, but, uh, just with, uh, I had some stuff come up today and I wasn't able to. Um, do that. I, I done some other things here for a few hours today, and and I didn't get out here till almost dark, and then I was kind of in the bad mood, so I just didn't worry about it. But I'm actually in a pretty good mood now tonight, this evening. I've got, like I said, I've got just a. You can see maybe over there, there's eight rows left, so I'm gonna shut the camcorder off when I get to the far end here. But. These kernels on this corn are just little. I bet if a guy done a kernel count on this corn, it would be phenomenal. Actually, I know I, I know what it was. I done one, but man, the kernels are just tiny. The, the test weight ain't there to make the bushels. And I guess we're gonna run a lot of it through our cattle this year. I think we're gonna try to keep more and finish more cattle at our farm here, and, and I think that's gonna work out good for us using our own feed, running it through our own cattle and stuff, and. And you know, someday I'd like to buy some cattle um, and feed out, but right now it's just not uh, the time for me to do it, I don't think. Um, but that's just what I'm thinking now, anyhow. And you never know, I might change my mind by the time it all is said and done. We might end up with more cattle at, at the old Kaler Ranch. But this combine, the corn picking combine, it's uh. You know, it's, I think it's about 300 horse, and I know it's not a very big combine by today's standards, but you know, for our operation and for what our yields are in our area, you know, this combine's a pretty good machine. Um, there's a few things that irritate me about this combine. It needs a little bit more power to the hydro for road travel, and it, it needs, uh, the grain tank on it wasn't designed for, uh, it wasn't designed for an extension. And the incline auger needs a little help, so that's why I've got that bubble up auger in there. Which I'm sure you guys have seen. I know Jake Ziegler's got one in his combine as well. Um, but that's not, uh, we do a lot of wet corn here at our farm. Or generally, not necessarily our farm, but I do a lot of wet combine in corn. We start about 30% and we run, run it wet till it's down to about 20 but the feed yard loves it about 25. It works good for everybody that way, but um, that's why we start when it's about 30. They're, they do a one and a half percent shrink on it per point of moisture over 15 and a half. So I think that's fair. Some people think it's too much, but you know, I've actually left some corn, um, done a little experiment last year. And I made the same amount of money on the corn that I left stand, or the corn that I combined earlier, 
the, the corn, I, I think I probably got a little bit more strength than what's necessary on the corn. I combined pretty wet, like I think it was like 27. But then the corn that I combined at like 15 or 15 and a half. Um, I had a lot more uh, header loss, which I know you can do things to change to help alleviate that, but you can only help so much. I had uh, more ear droppage on the ground. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, for me, I really enjoy taking out wet corn, and it's something I'm probably going to continue to do as long as there's a market for it, and I'm not going to have to pay to dry it. Uh, I've been watching uh, other people's videos, and they're drying grains this year, and, and man, that's oh, that's got to be rough drying all your corn like that. Um, we used to dry a lot of corn. We had a, a batch dryer, Ben with a heater and stirrators and stuff in it, but it's been a long time since I remember that being used. Um, going on probably 20 years maybe, at least 15. Yeah, I wouldn't surprise me if it's almost 20. But this actually, this corn here is actually, one end of the field got hailed on worse than the other, I think is what's wrong or what's doing it. But the south end of this field's running about 15, and the north end of this field's running about uh, it's running about uh, seven, well, 17, nine, let's say 18. And I'm mixing it together, obviously, so it's just just above safe storage. So our plans are once we once we get this here combined, um, this will be the first bend that we start grinding out of for our own cattle use and we'll save the dryer bins for possible selling later or we'll feed that maybe in the summertime if we have cattle around then. But here we are at the other end of this field. I'm gonna go ahead and call her quits. Um, kinda doubt anyone makes it this far. I don't know if I'm gonna put it all together or make two videos out of this or just put up half of it, but. Or cut out some of the middle, it's hard to say, but. I guess, guys, appreciate you watching. Please leave some comments, and, uh, yeah, we'll talk to you guys on the next one. Thanks. Bye.